If you would like to get into wild and you don't know which cards to buy, should you buy the wild packs that are now available in the store? Should you just craft stuff? Which cut do you actually need? Which cuts do see play from each of those different sets? There are thousands of cards, over 2.5k in Hearthstone now. So we will go over every single card that kinda sees play. Keep in mind, I'm also just a human being. I will forget some cards that see play somewhere, but that I didn't think about. Most of the cards you will see displayed on screen, which is going to be really scuffed because it's about the video information, not about the quality. Also, it's really hard to, you know, sort them in a beautiful way. Those cards are the ones you should go for. I will explain to you every single epic and legendary in which decks they see play, and then you can decide for yourself if you would like to craft it or not. Because let's be honest here, there's no point in me talking about druid cards if you never played the class, right? But if you would like to go into druid and they show you something like a Viana, I can tell you which combos you can do with that and how good the card is. Also, before we start, me right now is, is from the future. I finished the recording first, which was one hour, then I cut it down to like 20 minutes, then I created all the cards in Photoshop as an overlay, so you can actually see what you would like to go for. I might have missed a few. If there's an epic or legendary that is on the screen display and did not talk about, accept it. And in the beginning, when I will mention that, that many common rares and epics and legendaries on each set that you would like to craft, just ignore the number I say. It's almost accurate. Thank you for your attention. Timestamps are, are right there. One more thing before we start. At any given point, if you buy an expansion for the very first time, in the first 10 packs, you're guaranteed to get a legendary. You buy one pack for 100 gold. Does it have a legendary? No, do it again. Until you get a legendary. So it could be a second pack, could be a first, could be an eighth. The point is, don't just spend a thousand gold and buy 10 packs immediately, buy one after another to maximize your outcome. But let's get into the wild sets. As you will notice soon, most of the epics and legendaries are situational. Meaning you don't need to have them at all. But they're really good in those stacks where they're in. For next Ramus, you get seven commons, two rares, and two legendaries. But you wouldn't buy the entire adventure just to get common cards, right? That's literally 40 dust per card. And for legendaries, we basically just need Lothab. I know we get Fugin, Stella, Maxna, and KT, and they're also listed KT here, but we don't need them. Fugin and Stella are memes, they are way too slow. Maxna is horrible outside of Battlegrounds. And KT is good in Big Rogue and maybe Darkest Hour, but basically in big decks in general. That brings us to a total dust value. How much does you would need to spend to get all those cards without buying the adventure? To 4,160. Keep in mind, 1,600 of that is only KT. Should you buy the adventure? No, just craft the cards instead. Just to mention it real quick, the dust cost at the end you see is for two copies of each common, rare, and epic. And obviously only one copy of the legendaries. If you want to get two copies, most of the time you don't even need to. Just one. So the dust cost might even be lower than the one I display here. GVG. We get 10 commons, five rares, four epics, two legendaries. In case I say the wrong number, because I edit this stuff in later, accept it. I think we should probably just focus on the epics and legendaries, and we just accept that the common and rare cards are in here and should be crafted for most of the decks they're in. For the epics, Fell Reaver is for Treachery Warlock. You want to make your opponent discard his deck? Craft him. If not, no. Quartermaster. Only an odd Paladin. Baku Paladin. Nowhere else. Light Bump for Control Priest, but you have so many bot clears, you probably don't even need Light Bump. Ancestors Call. Maligos Shaman slash Big Shaman. Those two decks, nothing else so far. And lastly, Enhancer Meccano. The card only sees play as a one-off Zoo deck for Warlock. You can play him in different decks. The card is good overall if you have a big bot. Token Druid, Mac Hunter, basically anything that spawns the bot, that plays lots of small stuff. Is the card needed of all? No. Would it be good if you open it? Yes. To legendaries, Sneeds is just fun. The card is not that good, it does not have Taunt, no better cry, only a death battle. It's more for the memes and it's fun to play. Dane likes it, I like it, Ruffer likes it, we all like it. Not needed for anything. And then Malganis. Sees play in Warlock for the past five years, great card. Basically in any style of Warlock. Brings us to a total dust cost of 9,000. And then some of those cards, as I mentioned, you don't need. Black Rock. Four common, five rares, one legendary. There's not much to say. Some of the cards listed might just perhaps see play in the future. For example, Dragon Concert. Lovely artwork. Beautiful. With a new Descent of Dragons expansion that is probably out by now. I assume you might want to play him. Not needed though. But now to the one legendary in here. The combo enabler for pretty much every single deck. Emperor Torreson. The card is so good. Emperor Torreson is so good. If you want to craft a golden card that sees play in almost every deck, him. Mainly for slower decks slash combo or control decks, not for aggressive decks. There's no point in playing him. If you craft two copies of each card, only 3000 dust for the whole adventure. Don't buy it. If you buy the adventure and get all the cards and disenchant them, you still get value out of it. So just for your gold to dust ratio, it's always better to buy adventures and disenchant all the crap cards and then keep the dust. 
because they're guaranteed legendaries. Welcome to the Grand Tournament, champion. Wow, that is not the best set. We got six commons, five rares, three epics, and one legendary. We get Astral Communion, only sees play in Big Druid, no other deck. And you need lots of giant legendaries for that. So the card probably doesn't even matter to you, because the deck is high, really expensive, really, really expensive. Mysterious Challenger. I've seen like one secret paladin in wild in the past four months, five months. Probably also not needed, but if you would open him, eh, he's all right. And then Twilight Guardian. It's just a 3-6 taunt, but it is also the dragon pack, and you don't know how many dragon decks you would like to play. He's all right, he looks pretty nice, probably also don't need it. And the one legendary in this set is Aviana, because Aviana and Takun have so many combos for Druid. If you want to play really dumb combos with Druid, Starliner, Torkwaggle, something else, Aviana Kuhn is your go-to thing. If you don't like Druid combos, don't craft Aviana, which means out of the 5,480 dust, you probably just need like 1,000, 2,000 to have all the cards you need. Really cheap this time. Don't buy packs from that. League of Explorers, 100% buy that. Gu guaranteed. If you have gold, you can buy it, buy it. So we got four common cards, four rares, and three legendaries. Reno, main card in every single Reno deck. Bran is just so much value. You've seen it in Battlegrounds, you've seen it in games. He is just great. And then also Finley. If you would like to play more aggressive decks, he's your go-to card. If you play something like Token Druid, Pirate Warrior, you would like to get a different hero power. Mainly the Warlock hero power to draw a card, as well as Hunter because Smog. Finley only sees plain aggressive decks. The other two in pretty much every control deck. Any Reno deck, obviously. Total dust cost, 6.5k. Next set, the Old Gods. Eight commons, eight rares, one epic, three legendaries. Now, even though I said one epic, it's Call of the Wild. You don't need that. If you would like to play Spiteful Hunter, like Spiteful Summoner into that spell, or some version of a slower slash control heavy hunter, play that. If not, no. You don't need that for anything. For legendaries, obviously. Xenoth the Corruptor, like Tempo Stone pronounced it. York for the memes, as well as Yasharash for any big deck. Yasharash, pure value. So good if you get him early on. Nizoth, just the best legendary of that entire set. And York is, is more for memes. So if you really would like to play the best decks, it just is off. The other two don't count. You could also argue that Cthune sees play, but no. Cthune is horrible. Fun card. I love him. But it's not a good dust investment for you. So also, like pretty much every set so far, don't buy it. Get your free legendary in the first 10 packs, then stop buying that. Total dust cost will be around 8k, and you just need Azoth. And a few rare set epics. And do you know Kara? Who is Kara? Karazan. Eight commons, three rares, one epic, and one legendary. Now the cards in here are a little bit more debatable. But at least we got Arcane Giant that sees play in Cyclone Mage. And that's it. Cyclone Mage, maybe something like Arcane Giant Control Combo Warrior that doesn't exist. If you play Quest Mage, open the way gets Quest Mage in the aggressive style of that. You need Arcane Giants. Outside of that, no. For the legendary, I only put him Barnes. He got nerfed recently and sees less play. You play him in Big Priest. If you like Big Priest, you, I guess you still play him. And then he's not even that good. I did not include Medivh, because Medivh is so insanely slow, you don't want to play him. So crafting other cards would be almost 4,000 dust, and then you don't even need Bans. So it's more like 2,000 dust to craft it. If you just want to disenchant the cards and get safe dust, buy the adventure. If not, no. Gadgets then. 13 commons, 7 rares, 3 epics, 5 legendaries. Dragon Fire Potion might be really good. We have more dragons than ever. Maybe Dragon Priest is the go-to thing you would like to play right now. But if your opponent also plays dragons, it has no effect. So probably just play Light Bomb instead of that. We get Sleep with the Fishes. Sees so play in Dead Man's Hand Warrior. Only Dead Man's Hand Warrior. And then Dirty Red. You just need one copy of Dirty Red. So for all the epics in this set, you need one Dirty Red. That's it. Destroys combos. Your opponent plays Shadowbok, Aviana Kuhn, Makathun, drop Dirty Red, and then you win the game because the combo is gone. For Legendaries, we get Raza for Reno Priest. We get Kazakis for Reno Priest, Mage, as well as Warlock. Keep in mind, in this set, they introduced Tri-Class cards, meaning that, for example, all the Jade cards only belong to Druid, Shaman, and Rogue. They can't be played in any of the other six classes. And Kazakis only sees play in Priest, Mage, and Warlock because it has that little tag in the top left. You can't play him in any other Reno deck. But he's good in there. It's still RNG, which options you get, but he's good. And lastly, Aya. Aya makes Jade stuff, play in Jade classes. It's good. Craft her. Total dust for this will be around 13k. But you don't need two copies of all the epics. You mainly just need Dirty Red. The legendaries are really specific for the decks you would need to play them in. This expansion is probably more like 5,000 dust or so. Like one legendary, Dirty Red, and the rares and commons. Angorok. Seven commons, six rares, ten epics, this time and five legendaries. Living Mana. 
Any druid deck that swamps the board. At turn 5 you get 10 tenant stats. Like the card is value. Primordia Glyph. Not needed, but a fun card. Mainly sees play in Quest Mage. Meteor, really control heavy. Maybe in Big Spell Mage slash Reno Mage. Shadow Visions and Priest is so good. You basically get the card you need. You need to clear the board? Get it. You need to kill a minion? Get it. Sees play in pretty much every priest deck. Viaspine Slayer for Rogue? Sees mainly play in Odd Rogue? Can see play in any Rogue deck. Blood Bloom and Combo Warlock? Mainly Makathun. Not really any other combo, just Makathun Warlock. Blood Bloom into Catechism into that. Also Darkest Hour Warlock. So actually two decks. Glutton Zeus. Very good removal because you also heal. One off. Gentle Megasaur. You like Murlocs? In Shaman, get two of those. Charge Devil Saw. You like to play Big Hunter? We summon beasts out of your deck for free with cards like Katrina. You like to play weird versions of Big Priest or Darkest Hour Warlock? You can charge immediately. Outside of those decks, the card does not see any play. Primordial Drake. Not the best card anymore, but still for big decks, it has taunt and it clears the board. Like I mentioned, Living Mana. Those are two twos when you summon them. If you play Primordial Drake, the board is gone. And it has taunt. Then to legendaries, we get mainly quest. Open the Vagates for Cyclone Mage slash Exodia Mage or 60 Squads of Wondrous Mage. Lots of meme decks with that mainly Cyclone Mage, to actually win games. Because Vargath into the quest gives you two extra turns. And then you just go face and win. We get Fireplume's Heart for Warrior, Taunt Warrior. You play lots of small Taunt minions, get the weapon, get that Ragnaros hero power, go face. Only Taunt Warrior. Spirit Singer Umbra. If you play Death Rattle Rogue. So Rogue and all the Death Rattle synergy and Savannas and stuff. It's alright. Plot Twist Warlock. This into Dormaster Dorian, for example, into Plot Twist. Umbra is not needed for anything though. Same with Hammett. There are exactly two decks I see Hammett in. A, Makathun Warlock, because you just blow up everything you don't need. Maybe in some really weird version of anything can happen Paladin, because you could draw into the cards earlier. But Hammett is a uh, really niche legendary. I also included cards like Kalimos and Blaze Caller in the Elemental package, but Elemental Shaman does not see play. You might want to play them. You like Elementals and Mage and Shaman? It's cool. Play them. Craft them. But they're not needed. The total dust cost for this expansion would be like 17.5k. But like always, you don't need most of the cards. Always keep in mind, there's no point in having a full collection if you don't play the cards. If you watch my streams, you know I have this binder next to me. This binder is full of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You can see my five pieces of Exodia. As you might notice, this binder has like 30 pages. Do any of those cards matter? This is similar to your collection in Hearthstone. No. If you don't use them, if you don't show them, if they don't see any play, there's no point in having them. So yeah, what is next? Knights of the Frozen Throne. So in here we get 13 commons, 4 rares, 8 epics, and 12 legendaries. Basically any legendary open is a 50-50 if it's good or not. Ultimate Infestation. So much value. You probably just want to play Overflow right now instead of Ultimate Infestation, just because it's 3 mana less. And you don't care about healing your opponent for 5. Obsidian Statue. You like to hate people? Yeah? Play Big Priest. Play Obsidian Statue. Outside of that, doesn't see any play. For Warlock, Nomferatu and Treachery. Nomferatu is alright to play on turn 2. It's more of a gamble card though. Even though your opponent does lose a card and you used to play Bran into double Nomferatu into Zola just to make your opponent, you know, burn a quarter of his deck, you don't really do that anymore. So Nomferatu itself is fine if you open it, doesn't see that much play anymore. Same with Treachery. As I mentioned earlier for Fell Reaver and GBG, if you play Treachery Warlock, as well as the Halfiend that is up there, you give it to your opponent, you play lots of cards or something like the file, lots of explosions, your opponent has cards his hand or his deck. You can also, and that is one of my favorite things to do, Give the opponent Doomsayer. If you give your opponent Doomsayer and end your turn, 2 card combo, 5 mana total, you blow up his entire field. And if you face Big Priest and they resurrect random minions, might be Doomsayer. And you're really happy. So Treachery of all, good card. I like it. Also usable for multiple dumb combos. And we get Deadman's Hand. Sees play in. I guess you guessed it. Deadman's Hand Warrior. You would like to go infinite. You would like to make your opponent overdraw because of Brandon Cold Lights. You would like to control the bot. You can play that man's hand warrior. But outside of that, and it's mainly meme deck where you play infinite Cthulhu's on Azos, or you play a bunch of Yorks, that man's hand is, is pretty bad. But there's a card that is not so bad, Drakari Enchanter. Drakari into Emperor Torreson. You get two Emperor ticks. The end of turn effects happen twice. Important for some combos, but only in weird and bad combo decks. So Drakari, you like meme decks, play it once. Not twice, not two copies. Corpse Taker. Okay, I should say soft play. It's alright as a card itself because it has Lifesteal, Taunt and Divine Shield, but you mainly want to play it in Shadowbox Shaman, because that and Walking Fountain together, as well as Zilliax, has all effects. That's pretty good. If you like really, really bad RNG decks, Meat Wagon into any card that has zero attack. Can be Summoning Stone to have some memes. Card is bad. Don't craft it. And lastly, we got Skarking Geist. 
Skarkengeist is important against three decks. One, against Druid. And Jade Idol is infinite. You want to destroy that Jade Idol, which is the main reason people play that. Number two, against Kingspin Rogue, because you destroy Deadly Poison. Does that happen anymore? Do you see the deck? No. And number three, against Mages. You need one Skarkengeist against Jade Druids, and only if they become more popular. And now to Legendaries. There are a lot of them. Malfurion and Hadronox. Malfurion is great in any control Druid deck. Good card of all, Hadronox. You would like to play Taunt or Hadronox Druid? Where you summon, you know, Taunt stuff, and then it's off, then this again, and then copy it. It's annoying, but it's fun to play. Has been a while since I saw that though, but you wouldn't be disappointed opening either of those. Then we got Rexa and Jaina. Rexa, Control or Reno Hunter, great card, so much value. Jaina, just a good card of all. Again, Control or Reno decks, pretty much a staple in those decks, because the elementals heal, and you can make water elementals that also freeze the opponent, it's really annoying. We get Uther. If you like Uther or Decay, which means you summon all four horsemen of the apocalypse, he is your go-to legendary. Is he good in... Period. No. But if you would like to, have an OTK in Paladin. Craft him. Archbishop Benedictus. Might see like a lot of value, because he is a lot of value. The card is so bad. I play him as a meme in Steel Priest to steal the opponent's deck, and in Weasel Priest, which makes the opponent's deck horrible. That's it. Outside of those, you don't need him at all. Anduin though. Velen OTK Priest. Any priest that would like to win games, good in there. Can definitely recommend crafting him. Then we get Valera and Gul'dan. Valera saves you for one turn because it has stealth. So he's mainly play in Mill Rogue, where you play infinite Colored Oracles, or infinite Azores, or in a slower slash combo rogue in general. Gul'dan is so insanely good, I have no idea why they never nerfed that. The card is so broken. The main demons you play in Warlock are Void Caller into Void Lord. You drop Gul'dan, the entire board is full of with taunt stuff, your opponent just concedes. The card alone wins you games against almost every aggressive matchup. Probably the first thing I would craft on this expansion. Then we get Kalaseth as well as Tartarum. Kalaseth in two decks. Ag slash Death Rattle Hunter, because it buffs your Devil Saw Ag and other Ags or cards that have zero attack, and also in Heal Zoo Warlock. You play lots of one drops, you play lots of three drops, but not necessarily two drops, because they don't heal, they don't do anything. When was the last time I saw Heal Zoo? Maybe like a month ago. For the last legendary, Lich King. Lich King is good in, in most decks. I see mainly in Big slash Death Rattle Rogue, because of Silver Vanguard. In general, it's a good card to play on turn 8. He is taunt, he gives you value, and he looks pretty sick. The total dust cost of this would be 27,000. Buy the set because you open good stuff. Cobalts and Catacombs. We get 21 commons, 11 rares, and 18 epics, as well as 10 legendaries. Branching past. See, he's playing every druid deck. But the card itself is really good because it's versatile. Craft two of those, guaranteed. Crushing Vaults. Spell Hunter, maybe even Reno Hunter, because the effect happens again due to Zul'jin. Outside of that, the card doesn't really see play. Same counter to my side. To my side might be a nice card if you play Spell Hunter. It's okay. Outside of that one specific deck, no. For Mage, we get Dragon's Fury. Big Spell Mage slash Control Mage. So if you clear the board for 5 mana, it's pretty good. Any other Mage deck, it doesn't really see play. Not even in Reno. Call to Arms. Murloc OTK Paladin, which is anything can happen and stuff. As well as just to cycle through your deck, because you can summon all the 1 and 2 drops out of your deck. Like Loot Hoarder and Righteous Protector, all those cards. If you like combo decks and Paladin, craft that. If not, no. Twilight Acolyte. You like Dragon Priest? You like Dragon Valence OTK Priest? Get him. Psychic Scream. Probably the best board clear ever made. The reason why this is so good is it doesn't silence and leaves the minions on the field. It doesn't destroy and trigger death battles. It just puts them back into the opponent's deck. It's so good. Get it. In Rogue, we got Feldori Strider. The card doesn't really see play, but if you like Miracle Rogue, or you'd like to draw lots of cards, or just like the idea of having a 4 mana 16 16 in stats, theoretically, it's your go to card. Unstable Evolution. You like a Wolf Shaman? I don't mean the cancerous version that we had in Standard for two months, but just the fun version of the random stuff, you know, like maybe you want that. Outside of that one deck, the card is bad. For Warlock, Cataclysm and Void Lord. Void Lord, probably the best demon ever made with Void Caller. Those two cards go together. You play Sense Demons on turn three, as mentioned earlier, into Void Caller, into Void Lord, you win against aggressive decks. And we also got Cataclysm and Warlock. You like to play Discard Warlock, or you like to play Makathun Warlock. Those two decks, only those two. And then for the last class epic, you get a Reckless Flurry. Do you like to play Odd Warrior, Baku Warrior? Hero Pound to this, basically a Flame Strike. You like Odd Warrior? Get the card. If not, no. Rummaging Cobalt. You'd like to play Jade Shadowwalk Shaman to get your Jade Claws back into your hand. You like that? Yes. Get the card. If not, card is really bad. It's a 3 mana 1 3. Void Ripper. Used to see play because Druid was the tier 1 deck. Druids played Spreading Plague, which have 1 attack and 5 health. White Ripper makes them 1 health. White Ripper into any AoE damage, Water's gone. Does that happen anymore? No. Carnivorous Cube. 
Any death battle deck, any value oriented deck, card is great. There are also some combos on Druid and other classes, but mainly Rogue as well as Warlock. Cube, good crop. Let somebody call the Creeper of here to club and see Shana you guys to get that Creeper to a video spiteful. that is not nearly as long as cut. You can play Spiteful Dragon Priest and you can play Spiteful Hunter. For the last epic, Dragon Hatcher. So he's playing exactly one deck, and that is Hadronox Druid. Besides that, I have not seen the card a single time in any other deck. Now to legendaries. First is Kithrina for Hunter. You would like to play Death Battle slash Big Hunter. You play her and get something like a 7-7 charge Devil Saw out of your deck or King Crush. She's pretty good. You can also activate her Death Battle with cards like Play Dead and Terror Stalker something. You don't like that style of deck? The card is... you don't need it. Aluneth. You would like to play Secret Mage, one of the best stacks at the moment? Yes, that's the only legendary in the entire deck you need. Get it, play it on turn 6, win the game by just pointing face and ignoring what your opponent does. Valanir does not see any play, but the cut, theoretically, is infinite. Same with the new legendary, Dragon Rider Talritha, not needed for anything. But you could play a slower version of Hand Buff Paladin, if that is your class that you really like to play. It's not that bad to open the weapon, but I probably shouldn't have included this in this list at all. Grumble, World Shaker Eater. You like to play Shadowbox Shaman? That's the card you need. No other deck. For Warlock, I listed Rin. Rin can win you value matchups if you face Reno against Reno. And you have Rin, she dies, and you play all those spells. You get Azari the Devourer. Wow, Azari. 10 mana, 10 10, destroy the opponent's deck. Is that good anymore? No. But you never know how the future is going to be. If really slow value decks make a comeback, and that is the meta, Rin is really good. But right now, in most cases, you just die on turn 5. The card is really bad. Zola. So good. Play that on Reno. Turn 9, Reno into Zola. You're happy. Even just in Shadowwalk Shaman. It can happen that Grumble triggers first and messes up your Shadowwalk. Then Doppelganger happens, but then you get Zola from the random effects and then get him back. Overall, sees play in multiple classes. Great legendary overall. Then we only got two legendaries left. Oakheart and Torkwaggle. Torkwaggle? Only sees play in Aviana, Kuhn, Torkwaggle, Druid. Then you switch ducks, your opponent has nothing, and you play something like Azalina Soul Thief, because Torkwaggle gives your opponent a spell to change ducks again. Your opponent gets your duck, which is mostly empty, or full of garbage, and you take his good cards, he gets a spell. Five mana, change ducks again. You play Azalina, get the same spell. So if he uses that, you use your own spell, and he is stuck with your duck. Only sees play in Combo Druid. And then in Combo Druid, you can so many combos that are better. It's fun to play fan favorite, and you might want to give it a try. And then Oakheart. As I mentioned in Hadronox Druid like two or three times by now, you play Oakheart to get Hadronox out of your deck. That's it. You like Hadronox Druid? Play Oakheart. Total dust cost. 29,000 if you craft all of this. But as you have heard, lots of cards in here are just very specific. But if you would like to use your gold the most efficient way while buying wild packs, Cobalts or Knights of the Frozen Throne, because at least half the legendaries are actually playable. Based on the power level of Descent of Dragons, you should probably just buy that and disenchant all the duplicates in there. That's probably just better. Now I'm still recording this, and the timer tells me 55 minutes. Just to sum it up if you're still watching, don't buy wild stuff outside of Adventures because it's the best dust per gold ratio. Most of the cards in wild are really specific to certain decks, and the cards you open are really bad. Out of all those sets, there are like a thousand plus cards. And only every fifth or sixth card or so is what I mentioned here. Obviously, there are others, other cards that can see play. But they are so rare that I wouldn't list them. Well, thank you very much for watching. This took longer than I expected. A lot longer. Please leave a like. That would help a lot. Also, follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Solemn. We stream lots of times. We talk. You can ask me anything. Also ask anything in the comment section down below. I read your comments, I respond to them, I actually do this. And most of the time people are surprised.